With Meta's announcement of their long-term vision of owning the metaverse, crypto tokens such as Decentraland and Sandbox soared to new all-time highs. Now, while I am a big believer in the potential of blockchain technologies to create a decentralized metaverse, blockchain approaches that are based on exclusive and scarce virtual land, like Sandbox and Decentraland, is entirely backwards and fails to grasp at what the metaverse will become. Here's why. The misconception of exclusivity in the metaverse as something that is possible to purchase has its ties to both real-world economics and blockchain economics. The perfect example, of course, is Bitcoin with its limited supply, which has forged the crypto dream of turning your lousy dollars into a whole lot more lousy dollars. Now, I don't have anything against Bitcoin, I hold it myself, but there is no reason why the coin model should be constructive for virtual land. While there are benefits to a deflationary symbol of wealth, because in any solid measurement the measuring tool must be a constant, there is no reason for virtual land to be scarce by design. The value of virtual land should not arise from an a priori exclusivity, it should arise by the value that it brings in itself. The point is that by imagining the metaverse in this manner, there is very little innovative ideation involved. The model of how land is tied to scarceness is simply adopted from the real world. It would cost a significant amount of money to buy, for instance, Times Square, right? Because Manhattan is a relatively small island and an epicenter for finance. So we therefore wish to recreate this exclusivity in the metaverse by introducing a programmatically constituted scarcity. It is this thinking which is entirely backwards. The value of Times Square is not a consequence of the scarcity of New York real estate. Rather, it is because New York uniquely brings value through business opportunities that the real estate there is scarce. There is absolutely no reason to adopt limitations of physical reality to virtual reality. In fact, the potential value of the metaverse, of course, lies in that it allows us to move away from this limitation, and it is this which needs to be utilized. Let us illustrate this backward thinking with a concrete example. Reuters reported in June how a plot of virtual land in the central land was sold for 1,295,000 mana. At the time of this video, it's worth well over $4 million. The buyers built a shopping center there, but Reuters could not see any shoppers when they visited. This is the perfect example of an entirely backwards logic, of making the cart pull the horse or making the tail wag the dog. It's selling the symbol of potential value before the value is present as an attempt to summon it. This also goes for sand. On their website, the first thing you will see is them writing how there will only ever be 166,464 lands available. So here, apparently, we need to get in early and save ourselves while we still can, because the metaverse seems to be almost full. Oh no. And this approach becomes embarrassing. We do not need any FOMO tricks and intentional limitations. We need a metaverse model where there is a symmetrical relationship between value and valuation. For guiding principles on how to create a metaverse that brings true value then, we need a better model. We have to leave behind the idea of land being worth something in itself. While this is the case for our actually limited physical planet, this line of thinking becomes silly when it is applied to virtuality. The alternative that I wish to propose there is nothing novel, it just isn't as silly. We already have organic ways of giving value to virtual content. A simple example is a YouTube channel or a Medium blog. Anyone can create one. It's the internet, you don't need to take up a loan to reserve your place on the web. As an example, the value of my Medium blog is essentially zero, because I haven't yet written any article that has engaged a substantial amount of people. For this reason, it has few followers and I'm not able to make any money from writing articles on Medium. On my YouTube channel, which you're watching right now, however, I have put in far more time and I can make some money by contributing value to those who are interested in VR and blockchain technologies, for instance. The crucial point here is that there is no essential difference, apart from the value that it brings between my YouTube channel with a meager 7,000 subscribers and MrBeast's with his 83 million subscribers. MrBeast's YouTube channel started off exactly as mine did, but the value that it brings is thousands of times higher, because the actual entertainment value that it brings is thousands of times higher. In exactly this way, blockchain protocols for virtual lands have to define the value of the virtual land organically through a bottom-up approach. We do not need limited land or predefined exclusive land with metaphors arbitrarily adopted from the real world. What we need is an open, infinite space connected with hyperloops where creativity can flow and where the value is defined and attained by those able to provide value through the best worlds of games, entertainment, workouts, studying and social activities. It will be the blockchain protocol that can open up these possibilities for everyone and thus enable competition and diversity that will have my investment. Right now you need 
tens of thousands of dollars to start creating a very small virtual environment in Decentraland. This bar is way too high and it limits diversity and competition between creators. There is absolutely no reason we should want to limit content creation to those who already have wealth to invest in this manner. I mean, this is and will be a limitation in our physical society nevertheless. We do not need to reinforce it further into virtual reality as well. At least within the metaverse we can have the possibility to give everyone equal opportunities to contribute and it is a diverse competition that will generate the best value. So, to nuance my point. While I do find the a priori exclusivity of land in the metaverse to be absurd, I should make it clear that the idea of a blockchain-based metaverse is actually a very good one. Peer-to-peer -peer economies for selling and buying access to events, avatars, services, etc. has great potential, and to be fair, Decentraland also offers this. It just has completely unnecessary limitations that will prove detrimental to the alternatives that are to come. So, when I argue for a YouTube model, therefore, I don't mean to argue that a centralized entity should act as a middleman between those selling and those enjoying content, and in this way take billions in profits that otherwise could have gone to the creators. The decentralization that blockchain technologies offers are incredibly dangerous to companies that profit from being the middleman. And this is great news, especially because it's why it might crush Meta, who wants to act as a middleman in the monetization of data connected to every inch of human communication. So the ultimate value will lie in a metaverse model with a protocol to enable any and everyone to create, own and monetize their own content. And I'm also not saying that this should be entirely free. Projects need funding. What projects do not need is structures that are antithetical to realizing their potential. So who will it be? I don't know yet. I'm still doing my research and by all means please uh, shill your projects in the comments below and if you want to stay updated on news concerning alternative use of the VR medium including blockchain technologies then AltVR is a channel for you so please like the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll stay in touch. Thank you.